I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts. Would you buy this house in Riverside Park in Clonshock? Well, it actually looks uh, quite nice. Uh, well done up. Um, mm. Unlike some of the houses seized by cab, it looks quite, uh, you know, tastefully uh, decorated. We went in behind the keyhole in the Sunday world this weekend when yeah. we just saw pictures of this uh, three bed property owned by the criminal Dean Russell. Yeah. Uh, it's up for 300,000, but it's it's a cash buyer thing now. It's not for auction, is that it? Well, it's for, um, I think the cash buyer thing is that, yeah, like it's it's it's, it's something that it's relatively sale, normal. Rather. Yeah, it's yeah. a relatively normal uh, stipulation that real estate agents have at times, you know, that they want, they you know, they want somebody to be able to buy it without waiting for mortgages. Yeah, stuff like that. So, so that's bizarre. Yeah. So they want someone to have 300,000 well, in the know, bank. as in to be. They wanted a quick sale. Yeah, quick sale, I suppose. Um, so, I mean, the house had gone up. Um, I think cash buyers actually mean somebody who has mortgage approval. Yeah, but There's has, no yeah, exactly. You know no I mean? delays. I don't think it actually means. No, it doesn't it's mean. Uh, me now. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Very early. No, don't agree. No. <laughs> very early in the morning. Well, it's very uh, tired. 11 o'clock, but yeah. You know. um, anyway, this house is one uh, which was seized by the cab after an 11 year fight by Dean Russell to keep the ownership of his property. And a mammoth battle. Now, he's an argumentative kind of a character, he Dean is. Russell, and he likes talking. Yeah. He's quite a talker. He's been on to Liveline. He's spoken to the Sunday World a number of times. But ultimately, this house has now been taken from him. The keys have been handed over and it's up for sale. So when I asked you, would you buy it? I wonder with these properties, I wonder, like you look at Rally Square that was Liam Byrne's house and it was a bargain for somebody. It yeah. would be a bargain because yeah. we know that Liam Byrne pumped 750,000 into the renovations of it. Yeah. The property, it, it, I flew over it at one stage, is absolutely vast compared yeah. to what it looks like on the outside. There's no garden left, but they have a kind of a roof terrace thing. Um, and of course, there's a bar in it and there's, oh, there's bullet resistant windows should you need those. Um, I presume the door was fixed after the cab angle grinded their way in through it. Yeah. And yet it sat there since 2016, 17, 18, 2018, perhaps. Maybe 2018, when that case was yeah. finished, with no buyers. No. Uh, and, and we had another uh, property from Kerry that was taken by cab recently in the Sunday world, which had also um, gone on sale uh with a, at a cut price, just like Dean Russell's house, which had yeah. also um, at one stage been uh, put on the market for 356000 Yeah, and that's point. recently enough that, you know, yeah. properties are moving. I mean, yeah. we just, this last few weeks in the Irish Independent, there was a headline that um, three bed properties are back to Celtic Tiger prices. So like there is a rush yeah. for family homes as always. But it's got to turn a few buyers off. You'd be a little bit worried that he might land at the door and order you out. You would, and um, absolutely, especially uh, if you're in the heart of the areas when these where these guys come from. Um, certainly other houses uh, seized by cabs, such as Sean McGovern's, I think were ultimately taken over by the by the local council. Yeah. Um, so there is a problem selling them. Uh, cab is not getting the full value of the house in 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 the sense that if yeah. the, the association with the with the criminal figure certainly diminishes the value and cab would always say i've spoken to uh, you know probably all the chiefs actually since it was came into existence in 1996 yeah. and they would always say that really they're not about no it's making not making money as such even though they do make quite a lot of money for the exchequer um, no, it's the seizures of cash. It's about the optics. It's about these guys in communities living it up, um, you know, having the nicest house with the nicest drive, with the best windows installed, the best of everything, not being allowed to do that. No. That they come in as this powerful entity of the state and they take it from them. Yeah, if you look at, I mean, which we've talked about again and again over many different podcasts you know, young men in areas where drug dealers are the big shots and, you know, the attraction of the, the money, 
the access to, you know, fancy clothes, holidays, all of that stuff is so attractive and perpetuates the drug trade and allowing somebody to live in a, in a blinged up house mm-hmm. uh, isn't an option. So no, it's not a financial thing though. Obviously the houses are still sold, that money is still returned. So it's still a good thing for the exchequer. And look, time heals all wounds, they <laughs> well, say. So well, somebody would just, if they could just go in and, you know, hope for the best. But you're, you're, you know, you're getting a bargain. And sometimes these houses will be bought by investors and they'll be rented out. And, you know, a lot of the time people going into them don't even know the background from them. So, um, so Dean Russell, though. Dean Russell, though. Let's talk about Dean Russell, because Dean Russell was a little bit unfortunate. If you look at the timeline of this house in Clonshock, he bought it in, in 1995, 1995, one year before the establishment of the Criminal Assets Bureau after the murder of Veronica Guerin, at a time when you could spend your money. He purchased it for 53000 um, And, you know, it was, sorry, it was a four bed rather than a three bed home over the course of the Criminal Assets Bureau cases against him, there was other properties mentioned, um, investment properties, uh, a villa in Spain and a property up the country um, that he had bought in conjunction with somebody else. But he has felt wronged from the beginning of the Criminal Assets Bureau targeting him. Yeah, because, and I suppose if you want to see it from his perspective, he bought that house for 53000 So the Criminal Assets Bureau ultimately come looking for him. But they're not looking for 53,000 back. Yeah. So he can't sell his house for 350,000 and give the Criminal Assets Bureau 53,000 that he can't unexplained wealth as it's described. That's not good enough for the Criminal Assets Bureau. What they're saying is it doesn't matter that you bought it for this price back in 1995 because you were able to buy it then we're seizing the whole asset. You're not allowed profit from... Well, I think actually what they do is they... It's not as simple as that either. Because no. it is quite complex, the Criminal yeah. Assets Bureau and the financing and the accounting and the sums behind it. But what I think they do is they look at the purchase of that property back then. Yeah. They look at what sort of legitimate income the person might have. They look at what is in their bank accounts. Yeah. And really, sometimes that can be more telling than the property asset that has increased. And say, for example, in the case of uh, Dean Russell, there was a bank account with a significant amount of money in it. And they were able to say that 61% of that nest egg yeah. wasn't accounted for with legitimate income. Yeah. So Dean Russell over the years claimed he ran a window cleaning business. He said he was a taxi driver. He said he had a furniture business. But again, to say that, you have to provide the Bureau with your entire accounting system from over all those years. And you have to as well show spending for those years. So you can't say yeah. I earned a hundred, I earned. 40 grand that year and there it all is in my account. They, you have to kind of be able, you've you've lived through that time with normal expenses. So that has to be. That is all taken in, well. in and like your spend on your, in recent times, your spend on your holidays and yeah. all that. It's like, well, where'd you get that money? Yeah, yeah. And how did you have that money? And of course, they always, like if you sit through the cab cases, they'll always come up with that. They got an inheritance that their mother had a few yeah. bob under the bed. Yeah. That they, you know, they made this great, that they gambled, you know, yeah. they make a lot of money on gambling and all this sort of stuff. But despite all his, um, Despite all his protestations and all these properties that were discovered and all the rest of it, this settlement appears to be the handing over of this property in yeah. Clonshock, which is now estimated to be valued at between 300 and 350. Because you see, an awful lot of the cases are actually settlements as well. Yeah. They're a bit like separations and divorces. Yeah, yeah. There's only a very small percentage of divorces, something like 5%, that go in in front of a judge and that the judge decides what happens to yeah. the finances, to the children, to everything else. Most divorces happen on a settlement basis when people agree. Yeah. Now, they agree after years of fighting and yeah. wrangling. And that's what happens with the Criminal Assets Bureau. They'll identify, say, for example, Niall Donald, you have 1.3 million. Yeah. that you can't account for. So what are you going to give us? Yeah. How are you going to pay us that back? You have a house, you have a, a yeah. villa in Spain, you have this, that and the other. They're worth this amount, but we want the one point. Yeah, and million. presumably if you go to court and lose the case, you could be hit with costs, which would be 
a huge amount. Um, huge amount. So yeah. I mean, if Dean Russell went, yeah, you could be hit with costs. Yeah, which would which would far exceed. Uh, we don't actually know was he hit with costs. Well, we this. don't know. He so. possibly is as well because they do more and more get hit with costs if they lose, or even if they settle. Sometimes, like many legal cases, like civil cases, they'll settle on the basis that both keep their costs exactly, exactly, and because ultimately the criminal assets bureau want to come to an end with these cases, especially with an agitator like Russell. Yeah, eleven years years through the course. Yeah, because I think he does feel hard done by and we know that because he's spoken to, to, <laughs> he to the Sunday Joe. World. Yeah, he spoke to the Sunday World, he's spoken to Joe Duffy and what he's basically said was he hasn't been in trouble in years. Um, you know, it's it's not to say that he's been an angel all his life. Uh, pa- I'm paraphrasing him here, but that, that, that was basically all in the past and they're still pursuing him. Um, and that's that's his basic defence. And, you know, he he, he probably um, did, did. So he's 50, 50 he's more than 54. 50, is he? 54 years of age. Yeah. And this was his family home. This was his family home. Yeah. Um, obviously, his name really was in the Sunday world more regularly uh, in the early 2000s, um, partly because um, his his brother was killed as part of the the, the the Sheriff Street feud was what the the the, the murder was put down to his brother Anthony, um, yeah. and Anthony Russell would have been then the connection with Christy Griffin. Anthony Russell was associated with Christy Griffin before his murder, right? And um, they would he would have been regarded as being uh, one of his key figures, although um, he would have had a longer association with with. North Dublin criminals, I suppose, including people like uh, David Babyface Lindsay. Right. So, you know, there was there was obviously a split in in there was a lot of feuds went on basically without getting into them. Christy Griffin, of course, is back out of jail in recent years and very uh, suspected to be very active on the drug market again. Um, that was a particularly nasty feud. It uh, was, and I mean, Anthony Russell wouldn't have been highly. Uh, in the middle of that, in a sense, mm. but there was, you know, there was obviously deals being done. Um, Dean Russell is a convicted armed robber. He has a number of convictions, some of them serious. He would have known, maybe known to associate, maybe some of the people that would have been involved with Jerry Hutch, actually. Um, oh, you know, in, in involved in some of those armed robberies in the 1990s. Um, but, um, and he would have, he certainly Subs- made a good bit of money out of window cleaning, didn't he? He's made a good bit Fairness, of window cleaning. Now and he's properties. And he subsequently um had been uh he'd been shot uh, famously in the groin in 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 the ni- in 1990 and he'd also been a target for or the suspected target of another couple of assassination yeah, attempts. Yeah, Gardy actually say that they cl- they saved his life twice. The yeah. first in 2009 which would have been a year after Anthony Russell his brother was shot dead. And at that time, he said he didn't believe he was a target for anything. He had no issues with anybody. And the second time was in 2015 when um, two individuals, Paul Zambra and Anthony the Giant Callahan, oh, Callahan yeah. were, were caught by Gardy and Gardy told him that they were, well, certainly yeah. it was reported that they were on their way to kill him. He again denied he knew them. He said he had no problems with anybody. He was just an ordinary window cleaner. Yeah, I mean, Paul Zambra would have been um, a gun for hire. Um, he's, you know, one of the one of the few guys going around Dublin that in in that role would have literally uh, been paid and hired to to carry out shootings. Um, so they were stopped uh, basically on the way to 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 a house in Clonshock. Uh, there was weapons were found on them, and they were pulled over, and. You know, the word went out that they were off to kill Dean Russell. Mm. Um, so we called out and he denied he was the target. Um, he, you know, obviously they never got there. And he was saying he doesn't doesn't know Paul Zamber, has never met him. You know, he he isn't the, the he wasn't the target of the shooting, which a lot of these guys like to get out there yeah. uh, for, for one reason or another. Um and then you know, he, he, so. Well, it probably makes them a little bit vulnerable if they're known to be under threat, to be living under threat. Yeah. Or that people, people. Um, people stay away. <laughs> well, also, or also that people, you know, that they're not feared enough maybe to be targeted, you know, yes. which is a part of it as well. It's that a bit of bravado. It was 2018, I think he rang Liveline. Yeah. And he complained that time after his home was 
uh, visited by Gardaí on foot of a warrant that there was uh, in place for him for speeding. He hadn't showed up in court. So they had a warrant and he complained that they came to his house at 4.30 in the morning, that his children, his grandchildren were asleep. Everybody was terrified. He had to run out the back door. He didn't know what was happening. He thought there'd been a murder and that wasn't the way Gardaí should carry out their business. He's quite vocal about how yeah, and you know, uh, uh, party if, and journalists should behave. <laughs> and can I say, like, um, you know, maybe his days at the at the like he's described in Cab as being a prolonged, deep involvement with criminality, um, and that's undoubtedly an accurate statement. However, his days probably at the very peak of it might be av- at an end, and maybe that's why he feels hard done by, yeah. that his name keeps popping up. And But he also feels like he's a good community guy, that he's chairman of the local football club, he told us back in yeah. 20. Was it recently he said that? or uh, I think that was back back when, after the Paul Zambra uh, yeah. incident. And that he does a lot of good in his area. He said, well, he won't be in his area any longer because uh, there'll be somebody new moving into the house. And I think maybe we've done a favour to the... Uh, state agent by saying he's no longer there. He's handed over the keys. He's gone. Yeah, I think we could get a little little sweetener in our yeah. barter account. Yeah, we don't get sweeteners from anyone. <laughs> no, so no. I'm, tr- I'm just trying to spread our wings. Put, put the barter account number up on the yeah. end of the podcast. I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah. Anyway, um, Dean Russell, um, over and out for the moment on him. And, um, you know, he's... Over and out for the moment, but we may not, yeah. may not hear from him again. But you never know. Or we might, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway... Thanks a million for that. Thanks, Nicola.